What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Corey Vincent here with the video game Bang, brought to you by NerdReactor.com, Antlion Audio, and Corsair Gaming. Uh, we have a great show for you because Jade Arena is in studio along with the real David Webb, Aaron Carter, no, not the Backstreet Boy, even better, VGB Aaron Carter is here. I am here along with James and Joe from Antlion Audio. You hear us talk about Antlion Audio all the time. Uh, they are actually going to be here. Not just plugging their products. Don't think of it like that. We have a very interesting topic about esports that they had going on in their office. They wanted to get our opinions, so we weigh in on what age limits should be applied to esports, if they should be applied at all. Interesting topic. Stick around for all that and much, much more on this week's. Welcome to another exciting episode of Video Game Bang. Video Game Bang. Your weekly source for all things video game. Featuring your fearless hosts, Corey Vincent. I'm pretty much uh, Microsoft and Marvel. The cans are on. The issue gets real. I don't get shot during the day. And Aaron Carter. By the armor, I equip it, and it's like pink thong. The guy that delivers vending machine items in my, in my job. He can play <laughs> the right <laughs> there. Fill up your Mountain Dew and grab your Doritos. It's time for Video Game Bang. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Corey Vincent here, and this is the Video Game Bang, brought to you by NerdReactor.com. What are you reacting to? Uh, also brought to you by Corsair Gaming. Come sail away with us. Uh, and a very special sponsor who's going to be joining us on the show, Antlion Audio. Hear the roar. Now, we actually have them here. What do you guys think of that catchphrase? It's one we invented for you guys. Um, as the director of marketing, I will steal it uh, the next chance I get. Perfect. <laughs> See that? We're making dreams happen here, Aaron. I like it. See? I like it a lot. I like that. They're open-minded. They're okay with it. Uh, we love the original one, uh, Keep the Headphones at a Mod Mic, but we've always wanted to throw our own spin on it. Uh, we haven't had the guts to tell Corsair <laughs> that we've taken theirs and turned it into Come Sail Away With Us. Yeah, I don't think they would be too happy on that. <laughs> and I think that Sticks might get pissed off. Really? Uh, is that a the band that's Sticks? Terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. Uh, joining me on the show, you heard his voice. He is the Thunder from Down Under. He is the Grant High Senpai, Aaron Carter. Welcome to the show. I do have a little Thunder Down Under. Uh, what's up, everybody? <laughs> I well, don't think I'm Australian, though. I mean, is that from Jack in the Box? Uh, is that what that is? The Thunder from Down Under. Is I that why you have no idea? Oh, okay. No. I no uh, Aaron, idea. You, you show up late. Uh, you got the glasses still on your face. You're on your phone the whole time. I mean, uh, have, uh, have you gone Kanye? If on you me? haven't, if you haven't realized, I have to do the takeover for the independent game developers. Oh, segue. So, so what does that mean? What are you doing uh, for independent game developers? So I have their developers? IGN account, and I've stolen it from their uh, their Instagram. For yeah, Instagram, IG, whatever you want to call it. I mean, <laughs> you said IGN. Yes, their IG and account, okay. uh, and uh, I've been snapping off photos, videos for them, and uh, turning it up, man. It's a takeover. So you turned it up. Yeah, of course. On a scale of one to ten, how many dick tic dick ticks have you put on there? Uh, dick ticks, I've put on there uh, zero. Really, you zero. kept it clean. Kept it clean. I, the first night, of course, you saw me at Dave and Buster's doing my thing there, mm -hmm. uh, throwing down three pointers at the uh, the free hoops or whatever the yeah, shooting yeah, game. Yeah. Uh, second night uh, was a little smite night, of course. So I had to go and show, you know, us playing Smite. Uh, and then the last night was kind of a mixture. I didn't know what to play, so I showed, like, my library and, and was like, hey, what should I go to sleep to, everybody? <laughs> weird. Yeah, it was weird. You're so now it weird. It's, it's show night, so, you know. Uh, the Sacramento Indie Arcade is, of course, happening on April 9th, and that is going to be at the West Sac Convention Center. We will be there along with two special guest cosplayers. Two of them, wow. Yes. Wow. Uh, we have, of course, Macy Rose will be joining us, and uh, a mystery cosplayer. We'll leave it at that. Coming from hours away to be our second guest. Oh, it's Disney, everybody. It's Disney. Well, it's just Disney. It's Disney. Uh, also joining us on the show, we have a lot to talk about with this person. Uh, Jada, welcome back. Hey, I'm next. Woo, what's going on? <laughs> Jada, how can life just constantly be beating you into the floor the last couple weeks, but you come in here with a smile on your face, you're still up and getting beaten Street Fighter, and you're still happy? <laughs> you got your car broken into twice. How twice does that happen? Twice in a month. Uh, you ever hear of locks? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I think if I didn't lock it, I probably wouldn't have had to replace I mean, the three just, windows. Oh, okay. oh, I right there. Yeah, I shouldn't just shouldn't lock my car anymore. Something's you know? going on. <laughs> no, I made a mistake. I left something on my back seat the first time, and I think the second time they recognized my car, 
And so they, I think it was, I think they, they, spite. They, 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 I think they were like, Rob bait. Is yes. that what it is? Yeah, I think it is. Oh, well, we just rob that one again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. This time, at least the second I, I time, think, they only broke one window. Wow. Instead of two. I think it's time to plant a trap, you know? Like, oh, a I'm, wallet that maybe explodes or something. I'm seriously, like, about to, like, put some food in there and lace it with poison. Like, Jeez. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's called murder. That Jeez. is called murder. And this is called a podcast. <laughs> <Exactly>. You just. <laughs> Wow. Well, now they're going to be expecting poison, and I'll do something else. I think the well, law is going to be expecting. Yeah, video game does not post. condone <laughs> yes. cold-blooded murder. Do not. Not whatsoever. Uh, uh, I'd like to assume they're listening to this podcast. Yes, I do, too. They're I want them, They're warned. They're warned. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> it was you, Web. Yeah. Yeah, raping my car sideways. Thank you. So Yeesh. the second time it happened, did they? Did you have anything left? I had, they, I had my sword-handled uh, umbrella. My like umbrella I've had for like ten years. It was the oh. only thing that was visible. Besides that, I had a little bit of makeup left in my car, and they took my sunglasses. They went into my damn sunglass compartment and took my sunglasses. Sunglasses are in right now. Bastard. We're gonna have to start yeah. Jada yeah. a GoFundMe I for said, like worst luck of all. How about oh just stop robbing me? That's <laughs> <Yeah>. their <laughs> website called that. Uh, uh, the last guy on the panel in studio here is the real David Webb, who has been working like a dog. Gross. Yes, uh, and he partially is one. It, <laughs> wow! Jeez, <laughs> you know what? Now I am going to break into your car. <laughs> uh, Web has, of course, been building the new VGB Studios website, among creating the show notes that you hear, stepping up big time, uh, doing the thing. Uh, so we got to give you our thank you for that and a shout out. Um, nice. And then joining us also special guests, all the way from who knows where via Skype, the, the, through the magic of. What we call the internet. Uh, we have two guys who work at Antlion, uh, our sponsor. We've gotten to meet uh, some of their team at TwitchCon. Uh, one is James. He's the community manager. And Joe, the marketing director for Antlion Audio. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, now, for those of you uh, who don't know, well, everyone who listens to us should know what Antlion is by now. But fill them in on exactly what Antlion Audio is. We are the premier place you go if you want to get some excellent headphones and slap an excellent microphone to them for the ultimate gaming audio experience. Yeah, and these mics are completely legitimate. Like, it's pretty insane. Uh, we've done comparisons on Nerd Reactor. We went to the highest end Astro gaming headset we could find, compared them mic for mic with the uh, mod mic, and it's pretty incredible the sound quality that you guys can get out of this thing. Um, I'm just waiting for that XLR version, baby. Bring once that <laughs> once coming. that once that hits the market, VGB might go full ant line across the table. It's it's awesome. Uh, beyond that, we have a busy week of news, people. It's been it's been uh pretty That's horrible. <laughs> that <was laughs> what? Really bad. You all thought it, you bastards. Nobody thought that. You all. <laughs> Nobody thought that. Uh, so much going on in the news. Uh, first news story. Now any Xbox One can be used to develop games. Wow. But and who's going to do that? Bill Grates. Yeah, no, he's not even doing that. Uh, he's <laughs> off turning pee into water over there in Africa or something like that. That's what Making he's doing. Racist <laughs> wow, you mean box. being an awesome person? Is that what that is? Son of a, <laughs> a lot of whole bunch of African people drinking piss. That's, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Uh, right. Clean piss. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But at the end of the day, people, it's still <laughs> pissed. It's still dookie. <laughs> yeah. uh, San Francisco, Microsoft has in recent years done a fairly good job of moving its Windows 10 and gaming platforms closer together, but mostly in favor of the console and console games. That may be changing with the next big Windows update, the Windows anniversary update, in fact, which Microsoft announced this week that it's an annual build conference. The company says it's renewing its commitment to PC gaming with Windows 10. You can stream Xbox One games to the PC, and now Microsoft wants to bring native versions of games like The Witcher 3, Age of Empires, to Windows 10. Yeah. Yeah. About time. I like the idea that they're trying to really connect everything. You know what I'm saying? And just make one massive yeah. failure since it's Microsoft. <laughs> you know. But um, I want to see who actually takes these, uh, these tools and actually does something with it, though. If everything is basically a dev kit, is that what you're saying? Every Xbox One. Every Xbox One is a dev kit now, yeah, right? Yeah, you just a couple of keystrokes and you're Yeah, because that's, <laughs> that's how you make a video game. Couple yeah, keystrokes that's how you turn boom. a 360 into an Mario. Xbox One. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you turn an Xbox One into a dev kit. It's okay. a chain reaction. It's just chain reaction. <laughs> yeah, but no, because I mean, uh, like I said, when you give the tools to the internet, they go crazy with stuff. 
yeah. you know, all the levels that they made from things like Little Big Planet and mm-hmm. stuff like that, Mario Maker. Um, the internet's going to take it and blow and it up. And Project Spark. Oh, that just took off. Um, yeah, it did. Did that even release? That was released? I don't even yes, know. it did. Did it officially go? Yeah. And It's been out on the market for like, I don't know, six, eight months. Oh, see, that's uh, the problem yeah. there, yeah. What, it, the tools, I don't think, were very uh, intuitive for well, the average person. This one will be really ground up type of thing. So you'll get your hardcore game developers, you know, going out there and doing their things. So. What do you think, Joe? All right, so here we go. Microsoft, first of all, the first thing that occurs to me is, hey, didn't doesn't Microsoft do this every time they release a, a Windows version? Mm-hmm. Like, didn't they do this for 8 and 7 also? They're like, we're going to make PC gaming big again, and then nothing happens, and, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. But mm-hmm. then also, let's not forget that Xbox, the original, they're the ones that sort of pioneered this indie development with the uh, live arcade, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. with every successive version of the Xbox, they like pulled more and more support away from indie developers, yeah. which is a mixed message to me. So are they once again returning to that route, or are they just going to pull the rug out from everybody again? I don't know because they started that early access thing and worked with indie developers. Like they, the last E3, they had Hinterland Games, uh, The Long Dark was like one of their marquee games. But then it just kind of seems like it was something big they said and some buzzwords came out, and then a year later, what do we have? Well, because I mean, look about. Look at the way that they probably look at it as money. So, what's the biggest indie arcade game you could think that came out on the 360? Minecraft. That's horrible. One thing, Corey. <laughs> oh, Minecraft. And, what? <laughs> uh, and was that an indie one? Castle Crashers. Yeah. 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 yeah they're swore. both indie. Okay. I, I mean, mean I Behemoth could've... is on the on the upper side of indie. For yeah, sure. they're like yeah. the upper they're upper. So if I would put them on there, I, I, in my opinion, the best indie game that was but, like no. But what about what about when you go back um, to the original? Oh Xbox. man, I hate when this happens, guys. Is it me talking about this? Is it damn hard time? Uh, yeah. Right. Cut you it's off. This is a segment that happens uh, whenever the podcast gods determine it needs to happen. We have to stop the conversation immediately and talk about the video games that we've been playing. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry, guys. We have to stop it. If we don't, we will lose our podcast license, and we are unable to broadcast. So we'll start with David Webb. What have you been playing, sir? Smite. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When I'm not working on the website, <laughs> pretty much Smite. Uh, and oh no, you know what? No, I played Halo last night. You know why? Halo. Yeah. Halo One. Good what? Lord, yeah, Master why? Chief Collection. <laughs> I just I was looking at it sitting on my desk. I'm like, mm, I'm gonna play you. Oh, a pity <laughs> so I pity did. play. That's what it was. <laughs> I get it. Yeah, I was. I, I I threw it a bone. All right. <laughs> Acceptable. Uh, Aaron Carter, what you been playing? Of course, Smite. Of course, Smite. We really need to broaden some horizons. Uh, when you make perfection, uh, you have to go with perfection. <laughs> Far from perfection. So God. I'm going. Big with that. words. Oh my God. Uh, I, it's with that worth one. mentioning that High Res nor Smite sponsor this show. <laughs> <Yeah>. High Res. <laughs> Neither of them. Do. He's, he's just, aiming for that. That's valid. Exactly. That you that's have what to I'm say shooting that. for. I'm shooting wants. for for them to to go ahead and sponsor us. That's they might not do. sponsor the show, but I think they might sponsor somebody on the show. I mean, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you son of a Aaron. <laughs> I'm just saying, uh, you can get your Smite uh, All Gods pack for twenty nine ninety nine. Everybody, you get all the fifteen this month that's right yeah yeah there you go still too much uh a couple people in chat are saying aaron you should play paragon uh i would play paragon if i wasn't uh banned from every (laughs) epic game ever so that's right right. aaron broke nda yeah i broke the the did not check and do his due diligence on um fortnite then i streamed it uh got our account banned for like 48 hours had fun with it for 30 minutes and then uh Got promptly kicked off, of course. Yeah. And then months later, when they're like, "Hey, here's a Paragon beta. You know, you want to join?" And I was like, "Sure, let me join." And they're like, ah, "Sorry, <laughs> you've been banned for life." Uh, so, but we'll still send you emails saying, "How's that? <laughs> how's that beta going?" That's funny because oh. uh, Bruja on Discord, uh-huh. he got codes for Fortnite. And he asked if we wanted them. And he's like, Aaron, I'm not sure if you signed up for oh, the beta or not. <laughs> I definitely signed up. I, but I, you I got banned. Uh, Jada, what you been playing? Uh, League. Lots of League. I got my gold ranking back. And Horrible. then uh, Street Fighter and a new indie game, Leap of Fate, that just came out yesterday. Tell me everything Today. about it. Leap of Fate? Yeah. Uh, rogue twin stick shooter, four different characters, each with unique uh, upgrades and play styles. Um, you go through levels that are randomly generated each time. 
um, based on like a deck of cards and you try to upgrade and get to the end. I still have not f finished it because it is difficult. <laughs> now, is this cross platform? It sees that it's on the PC and the uh, it's tablet. Uh, not cross. It's only single player. Ah. So yeah, it's a single player game. Um, What's the purpose then? <laughs> um, challenging yourself and growing yourself as a gamer. Not if there's multiple characters to play as. Is there multiple characters? There are to multiple. Play as? There's exactly. four characters, but it would it'd be. The maps are too small to where I don't think it would be easy. It would be too easy with four people. Just that because, sounds like a developer problem. Um, well, I mean, it's what they were going for. They, it's difficult when you're by yourself. It is got a really good challenge level to it. I've like made Dark Souls it, type of difficult? Um, bum, 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 bum. Not that difficult. No, not that difficult. it's not. Not that difficult. It really, it's don't forget more, your animals spade <laughs> neutered. <laughs> exactly. It's, it's, it's difficult, but it's not that difficult. Okay. It, little, it just takes more time and practice. You know, Dark Souls is about learning everything. It's about, about hating yourself. Let's and be honest. Yourself, that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, they don't punish you as nearly as bad. In anybody who's game. really into Dark Souls has like a sex dungeon with weapons. Not true. Wow. I, I am pretty sure it's not true. true. I love Dark Souls, and I don't have one of those. It's a sex. Oh, addict. Six, I have two of them. Or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yet. Uh, what have we got over here, uh, Joe? What you been playing? Europa Universalis. Hmm. I, I'm gonna do totally just like of flabbergasted all, all of I them. I think so. You're gonna they have, have no this. idea what that is. <laughs> Europa, really? They yeah, they don't know. <laughs> Go Europa, for it. Uh, explain Europa, it to them. Aura Borealis. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> it is a hardcore strategic, you know, a grand strategy game in which you take mm -hmm. the control of like any country on the planet as of whatever the date is, 1600, 1700, somewhere in there. So 1680, I think, is when it starts. So risk? Uh, no. Well, like, if Risk were, like, I'm going to manage every individual soldier and their per interpersonal relationships, then yes. What? Like, it's it's every, detailed. The, Sounds exhausting. The characters' relationships? Well, that's, that's, that's actually more the... So there's, there's a game before that called Crusader Kings in which you actually do manage people's interpersonal relationships. Jeez. He's like, oh, man, my wife just combat. left me, so his played. heart just wasn't in the battle. <laughs> Go to the front line. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it's, that's a thing. That's like a thing, you know? You can have, like, you get, like, syphilis from, like, some hoary screw, and then, oh, can I say that on this? Yeah, <laughs> well, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, too then, late now, right? <laughs> <laughs> you get syphilis then, then you from... Like, pass, it on, pass it on to your wife, and, you know, she can die, and it's, it's great. Uh, but that's Crusader Kings, <laughs> European Browse. That's more about, that out. <laughs> more about killing Native Americans and whatnot and, and conquering the world. Wow. Uh, that's right, a game Nintendo about game. syphilis and conquering the world. There I, we go. I've also, I've also been playing Dirty Bomb, so, you know. <laughs> okay. That, <laughs> what? Is, that the, um, is that the one where you have to guide somebody else through a, a bomb defusal? No, no, that's... Uh, don't Stop Talking or Nobody Explodes or something like that. Yeah, that one I want to... Dirty, Dirty Bomb is a FPS free to play it's decent hmm. what's that first person shooter you were doing for a while Aaron where the, the dude's testicles were all over the place what <laughs> weren't, <laughs> you, weren't you playing some first person shooter for a little while that was like free to play that oh you're talking about um, dude's testicles all over the place <laughs> <laughs> that's all I remember um, well. go into the next guy I'll, I'll look it up for you Okay, <laughs> James what you been playing I mean that's that's a pretty tough one to follow there. I'm no, not, testicles uh, everywhere, yeah. I'm managing the interpersonal relationships. I'm just uh, I've moved just moved from Smite to LOL, so I'm, yeah. I'm pretty much what is wrong in with you? The flow of LOL getting spanked over and over again. So what you makes you change? Your lickings. You got to take your lickings. Um, you know, man, I play support a lot of support, and I played Smite really, really, really early, and Kepri was about the only thing that was like super, super viable for a while. Like, yep. I don't know. I mean, there was other other gods that were decent, but it was just everyone wanted me to play Kepri over and over and over and over. Again. Another feeling, it, man. It just gets old, man. And so I just moved to you know. So now I now I get told to play Blitzcrank. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Loadout. That's the name of the game. Loadout. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I don't know why you were into that one for a while, but it's still actually pretty good. It's just I don't have a team to play. It's like Call of Duty. Like, how many times do you pick up Call of Duty by yourself? Never. Yeah. You kind of need a squad with you to go around. So, I mean. Like the division. Aaron, do you have anything exactly. to ask me? Um, uh -huh. Do you know the Muffin Man? <laughs> when is your next haircut? Worst co-host. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Webb, you, you want to take a shot at this one? <laughs> I 
I can't think of anything smart ass to say. Corey, what have you been oh. playing? Oh, thank <laughs> God. Oh, there he fail, is. What a fail. cop out, Webb. Uh, that's why it, you can always count on Webb to drop the ball. Terrible. Yep. Like, Web, something fell off your nose. Yeah? Yeah. Was it this? Mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For the viewers at home, he clipped him the bird. <laughs> uh, Street Fighter has mm. been the main one I've been playing. Uh, of has course. the update come out? Yes. yes. Okay. All right. Uh, I did play a little Alex today just in training mode. Uh, not Nothing to make me move from Ryu, obviously. Because Whoa. Because well, you're basic. Don't go too far out of your character. Oh, well, you know, I'm not going to switch, go and do anything extreme and switch characters. Yeah, Ryu is, is right? I only need one character on the roster, honestly. Mm, uh, I laid the smack down on Jada for like 30 minutes before we started the we show. Went, you went, we went five and three. No, 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 no. Yeah. No, oh, like, no, no. So you like, went six and three because I set my phone down because you stunt. You won that last one. Six yeah. and three. Six, 30 and six and three. I don't know. 75. Enough whatever. to where I'm purely or, the best player here. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I haven't played for two weeks. I had GDC and then other stuff. So I was, I did not, I have not played. That was my first match. My uh, first real matches in like two weeks. Although I haven't been able to play too many games, I can say that t- starting tomorrow, I will be streaming some Doom. So we do have access mm. to the Doom closed beta. Uh, there is no NDA or... <laughs> That's a good thing. Yeah. You got to read those you fine know, prints. You check those things, <laughs> Yeah, typically, uh, like a responsible adult would, nah. uh, which is going to be cool. I mean, that's pretty ballsy to throw no NDA. You see a lot of games right now switching it up to where they want that Exclusivity. Uh, that exclusivity where you can't release your review until like the day before, uh, and it always makes me worry when they do that. Let's let's be real. Doom has not been at the forefront of gamers' minds for at least a decade, if not more. Um, I'm gonna say twenty years. It, it was original Xbox was the last time when Doom Three came out. I think, and it was it was good when they did the re-release or whatever that yeah. reimagined not reimagined or whatever it was but Remastered it still wasn't yeah. like top echelon they were like oh well we can't see anything it's too dark and then they had to come out with that flashlight pa- mod yeah, the duct tape ridiculous. mod <laughs> it was ridiculous so bad but yeah no like I think I think it's a smart thing to do in their case they need as much publicity as possible with this new Doom if they want it to compete in today's first person shooter market it's still a roll of the dice because if they come out with this beta and it's terrible oh yeah then they can't go back to the drawing board the gameplay i've seen i mean it looks solid but i'm still not interested what That's do you guys think thing. antlion uh joe have you i think there's hand boys either way jumping on the bandwagon for doom i mean everybody's been hungry for a good doom for mm-hmm. so long they're gonna they're, they'll they'll make sales i mean I, I think they put out a crap beta and still the fanboys there's you I mean, they could pull a Duke Nukem forever. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. I mean, it's just the the markets, the space is so hungry for it. They've been wanting a Doom for so long. Like, I I, I don't know. So I, I was I, think... <laughs> I, I was the PR guy for uh, like many many indie games, many of which you'll know and love. Uh, so I know that decision making process that like goes be into this: do you NDA something or not? And usually in the indie space, of course, we say no NDA, just just roll with it, because uh, we're worried from our side on the indie side that if we say NDA, come the time when you can post something, you're going to be busy with something else. Mm. So, gaming says uh, gaming in chat. Uh, he said he was on the Doom Alpha. He felt like it was stuck in the '90s. It's Doom. What do you? Yeah, uh, isn't it supposed to be? Like. <laughs> What are you expecting from Doom? <laughs> what I feel <laughs> advanced warfare. I've signed me up for the beta. Mm, yeah. I think their thing is they're going for over the top gore, right? They're just going to go for like you can rip people's heads. Based off, God off of War what first we saw, first shooter, right? Yeah, E3 was when we got the first major glimpse at what was going on at that that little basically film. I felt like I got inklings of Rise, Son of Rome. What? So what, then it's that, a terrible that game. Single playthrough, then. done, <laughs> one and done. Yeah, and like the mechanics of. Uh, the little, you know, the gore fest finish them moves uh, okay, that they do. Yeah. Like the first time you see it in the Doom trailer, you're like, "Holy shit!" He just busted his head, and then he did I it like five did not times react like that, that, at that at all. I did. No. I was like, I was like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> I still have a shred of humanity left in me to where when I see a head explode, I like react. Oh yeah, I lost that at like age ten. Yeah, in a video game though. Yeah, well, it, the games look real now. Man. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I guess there are there, there's two type of gamers then. There's the ones that really 
like critique games and, and like the break them ones. down and everything like yeah, that. The sound ones on and the side of the Corey. table. <laughs> and then there's we have two sides of the table yeah. of gamers say what you will man I saw it the first time it looked awesome but then by the end of that little it was not even a 10 minute video I'd seen the same move four times and I was over it it'll have about the same sales as Homefront which Tanked. was pretty bad if I recall Yeah. but that, the sad thing about Homefront is it had a pretty damn good story uh, yeah uh, we'll move on to the next yeah. one. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you guys liked Homefront, buy Doom. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot <laughs> take you away. <laughs> exact same game. Apparently. <laughs> now I'm going to get an email. You know, your beta, beta privileges. Beta. I've been watching too much English crap. Uh, they're going to revoke our privileges. Thanks yeah. to you guys. You're welcome. Thanks. Uh, Save some gamers some money. Report. Final Fantasy 15 launches September 30th. Now, Square Enix will About release Final time. Fantasy 15 on September 30th, 2016, according to a report from GameSpot, so you know it's true. Uh, this is the one where the characters were driving a car. Yeah, and it's the like boy a, band mm-hmm. in yeah, some the type of... There was a kaiju in the background. Uh, and bridge to Terabithia setting or something like that. It's weird. Yeah, it's very different. <laughs> so weird. I, I, you know, I really want to root for this game because mm-hmm. Final Fantasy used to be like the epitome of RPGs. Like mm. when you thought of RPG, Final Fantasy is where you go Number to. Number one always. You know, seven. Uh, eight. eight. Yeah. I eight is actually, that. eight is a big fan favorite. It's a big cult following for eight. Uh, I can't stand eight's battle system and stuff, but eight is still really good. Nine-ish. Ten really wrecked I still wrecked own it. my Final Fantasy one cartridge. See, look yeah. at that. He still owns his one. And it, especially in the Super Nintendo days. Final mm, Fantasy three. was just wrecking it. But somewhere along Don't the line. Don't forget though. What's that? The, my Final Fantasy One is the same thing as your Final Fantasy Seven, and the Final Fantasy Ten and Twelve and Thirteen. It's all the same game. It hasn't changed since the first one. Yeah, I formula. Mean, yeah, but I don't know what this formula is going to change a little, right? This battle system and everything. Yeah, it's more of an active. I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know. I know. I, I do like change and them trying new things. But mm-hmm. if you haven't been killing it for the last couple of games, you might want to try to kill it. Well, this they, one. They've been experimenting with Final Fantasy. The whole 13 saga was an, a big kind of like, hey, let's try this. All right, let's try this. Let's And they just tweaked it all the way through the whole formula the whole way. And so I think 15 is close, resembles the Lightning Returns a little bit closer where it's that that real-time action. Okay. Um, so I think it's a little, but it's even faster than that. I think they just kind of adapted even more. This is where it. I lose all my gaming cred, where that was my introduction to the Final Fantasy series. I know. Was the Lightning series. I know. That's a, ta- <laughs> that's a sad thing, then, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't think it was. I you, mean, you I know, have... The, go ahead. Uh, the important 15 question, though, will there be Blitzball? They, no. no. Sadly, there <laughs> won't. Sadly, we know that answer. We know the answer to that question. That would, that and would that, be lovely if it was And that would, like, make sales. I literally would buy, fif- like, a copy of 15 for a friend for Blitzball. Why not just make that a game by itself? A Blitzball game. They could. No yeah. idea. Just, so use, just use all the different Final well, Fantasy Square characters. Enix, I'm, I'm available for good ideas anytime you need them. <laughs> uh, just hit me up at the email. That's at Aaron, Sir Aaron Carter. <laughs> Uh, a leak says that Mass Effect Andromeda will have seamless open world galaxy. Okay. Okay. D- yeah. Are you back in? Didn't they? Uh, no. No. <laughs> Did, I, didn't they say something like that for the original? Like. Uh, yeah, but this time it's real. Show yeah, me. Yeah. No, but this time. Oh, oh. So we got a Peter Mullen you over there at yeah. uh, on Bioware's team and now. And there's gonna be a dog. There's gonna be a dog. A grows, space dog. And it grows old with you. He's and you're gonna love the dog more than you love yourself. When the dog dies, you will cry. Yeah. A- am I gonna be able to plant an apple and grow a tree in space <laughs> with their, with their more futuristic technology? What, what else does it say? Please uh, say there's more. A reported marketing survey from Mass Effect Andromeda has made it on into the wild, revealing some possible details about Bioware's upcoming entry. Uh, the survey slides popped up on Reddit, of course, asking people a series of questions about the new game. One of the questions provides an overview of the game, which reveals that it will take players to the Andromeda galaxy where a series of, of the formula will be flipped on its head. Uh, Andromeda takes players to uh, beyond the Milky Way, where you will lead a fight, a uh, new home of territory, where there are aliens opposed by deadly indigenous race bent on stopping us. Uh, let's see. Let's try and find the stuff, because we, we want to know about the seamless... I'm already bored. The, the, the problem We was, don't care about story. It's the prob- 2016. No, with Mass Effect, it was all about story. <laughs> was it? Yes. Supposed to be. Then they really 100%. let you down there with M. Night Shyamalan. You literally just woke up my galaxy <laughs> by saying whatever you said. <laughs> and dropped the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, it woke up. But anyway, the the problem with Final... Or not Final Fantasy. Mass Effect 
the whole series was very good. They made a, a uh, giant universe, and they give you a whole bunch of lore behind the universe. But then they came up with this giant threat to wipe out the entire universe, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what do you do next? There's nothing else in this universe that I'm going to be afraid of that was more terrifying than the last thing that tried to wipe out the universe. Something bigger and badder than the last Apparently thing. you're going to be more afraid of random monster spawns which is the feeling i just got when yeah you that. exactly <laughs> so i don't know they gotta they gotta they gotta come with something uh spectacular and i love mass effect even with the crappy ending i, I still love the series it's just it, it's tough to to outdo what you did the last time i never made it out of the citadel but see, I'm just kidding. You, I finished the first one. I was going to say, if you didn't. <laughs> no, I, I used to listen to a podcast. Aaron's heart dropped for a minute. <laughs> yeah, no. I used to listen to a podcast back in the day where the guy, they would go week and week and they would do the, you know, what you're playing type of thing. And he'd be like, I'm still in the Citadel reading all the stuff. Yeah. Oh, like, there's, there's a ton of stuff to oh, take in. That was like in my there. first, like, week. Of like, Mass yeah. was literally in the Citadel. You just keep, there's so much lore there, and it's really interesting that you kind of get stuck in that one mm-hmm. spot. And you, you, when you realize there's more game out there, you're like, oh, shoot, there's more I have to see. <laughs> there's more? There's more? Like, yeah. Sim and Citadel Edition. It's good, though. It's good. So I don't know what they're going to do in this next one. Just, just come with a good story and a good It's ending. a great lesson that procedural generation is not always better. Yeah. Sometimes it's just better to have a good writer. Yeah. Well, you should I, tell I, that I, to I, a I, lot of games. I think that's almost always <laughs> a lot of games. good writers. Tired of central. tights. I love that. Did you come over that web? Yep. <laughs> Composer Hans Zimmer is retiring from scoring superheroes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Phrasing. I, uh, he's actually not going to be composing uh, superhero movies anymore. He did BVS, right? Yeah. yeah, and I think the amount of hate <laughs> and controversy for that movie Deserve probably it. talked him out of it. Oh, it, it, it's a it's a tough game out there, man. Um, he chose his. I side haven't heard wrong. anybody complain about the music of that movie. I mean, of all the things, I've like, heard yeah, yeah, about, the that was my one complaint about the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Story visuals. was fine, but yeah. that movie, damn it, that the music. movie, the music, yep, yep the whole yeah. thing. That yeah. music was. Yeah, the yeah. whole thing. Yeah, no, there's. So, what's he doing now? Dramas? That's it. Uh, it says he's doing. Uh, Coming of age. He's movies. got an exclusive contract with Cartoon Network, where he's okay. only doing We Bear Bears and <laughs> no. There's a We Bear Bears. <laughs> Teletubbies, you know, <laughs> non-controversial stuff. Okay, okay. Uh, he's gonna continue just to score films. It says. What uh, other things did he do? He did um uh the Leo movie right with uh Revenant. No 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 the one Inception. Oh. Didn't he do that? That sounds right. I want to say that was Hans. Yeah, I think Hans did that one. Because if he did that one, then okay, I, I know other work that he's done. But I could have swore he just seemed like superhero superhero guy. Yeah. Well, he's got. Did uh, he do Transformers? He's done incredible. He did the whole Dark Knight. Oh, no. uh, I think he did. Yeah, the he did Dark the whole Dark series. He did the whole Dark Knight yeah. trilogy. Man of Steel. Okay, that's just a waste. Wow. <laughs> let's, <laughs> Everything around Superman. Let's, is a waste. Thank you. Let's, let's, let's get it. Let's get it on the table. If you're a like, Superman fan. The first question is why. <laughs> yes, why. The second question is: Is he even interesting? The third question is just an answer. No. <laughs> that's that's how that goes. Jada, did you check out the movie yet? Batman v Superman. No, I'm not wasting my money. So you haven't seen it yet? No. See, no. That, it's weird. This is, this okay. is the one this thing. This is weird. This is the one thing you can actually say, since you haven't seen it, you definitely can still have an opinion on no, it. No, yes, I yes, believe you that's can. true. Okay, so based off of the trailers, what I've read, the reviews I've read, what I've watched. Don't trust reviews. You I've, rev- first you reviewed things. Okay. You should know. Okay. Never trust a review. I don't wow. trust yeah. reviews. I don't. I don't base when I when I read reviews on things. I don't go and see something based on their score. Okay. I read what the context is, and I look for that writer's background and what other things they have scored. What else they have written. I read multiple reviews by similar, the same people. So that way, I can work. get a feel for. It is a lot of work, but that way I know when I critique things myself when I'm writing that I can kind of follow the same kind of path. I can follow my own path and stay consistent. And I like to see that other writers stay consistent. If they're not consistent, they're back and forth, flip-flop, I'm not going to trust their review. Corey, if we have to believe that there's a 1% chance that this movie sucks, we have to take it as an absolute certainty. <laughs> I think... I think Ben Affleck uh, said that himself. You can say things like, I have a feeling the movie's going to be bad. No. no. I, I'm assuming it's terrible. So, no. You can't say for a shadow of a doubt that it's bad unless you've seen the movie. I would say... But my big thing with it is that movie has failed to draw 1% of hype from me to where I would 
an inkling of where I would want to ever see this movie. What will, about what about Jesse Eisenberg? <laughs> Why? Let's, let's start off with our best foot. <laughs> yes, yes. That's what we're gonna do That's here. The foot that we <laughs> shot in <laughs> that has a hole in it. I've coming. heard so many bad things about it that it has sparked my curiosity. I almost want to go and see it just to see how bad it is. It's like you want to see a dead body? Yeah. <laughs> That's why I watch SVU. Cool. There's a lot of maggots on it. it smells yeah. terrible. <laughs> James, have you gotten to see Batman v Superman and do you share these gentlemen's opinion? I'm not going to see Batman v Superman. Batman. I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even pirate that movie to be perfect. Wow. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> pull, pull me out of here, Joe. What about you? Uh, I will. I will red box it. <laughs> but I, my problem is I haven't seen Man of Steel, and yeah, so I feel like the either. context is going to be totally lost. I hear they like they try to cram like everything into the first fifteen minutes. Like, here's all the backstory you need to know about the last five movies. But uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I have the feeling that you know I should probably see Man of Steel first and be very disappointed with that before I'm disappointed with Batman v Superman. <laughs> there you go. You won't uh, be disappointed in the right so order. So of all these people, <laughs> apparently I'm the only one who's seen it. Yes. And I'm defending it, the fact that you guys don't have the right to say that it's bad we until do, you've sat through the two and a half hours like I was forced God, to. Why That's am I going to see I, it? Don't get me wrong. The we movie is garbage. It sucks. <laughs> like, I would not recommend it. So, but yeah. I get to say that because I went through the struggle. No. You paid for so you no. paid for the struggle no, where we were just uh, into, we intuitively knew. I didn't yeah. pay. I got to see it on an advanced screener and okay. I saw it with a film philosopher so we recorded a podcast episode That's about it. That's literally like saying you don't get to talk about being burned because you've never been burned. <laughs> I got burned. All right. I touched the fire. <laughs> yeah, I did. Like, no, we were just smart enough not to touch the damn fire. <laughs> the hell's wrong with you? Thank it's you. fire. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Okay. That's what All we right. We'll leave that there then. All that's, right. That's, that's your best think. analogy. Hands down. <laughs> Ever. Aaron is not known for a good analogy. Wow. He's not. So that one uh, was the best. That was a Hail Mary. I'll, I got to give oh, him up God. to that one. I will I will form a rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> You'll read it on the reactor. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, next, next article. Next, next topic. Please. Uh, Call of Duty 2016 will be set in the far future, rumors. Oh, my God. So, are we, we'll stop it. We're just going to keep going forward. Stop we're, it. we're done with the near future. That's good. That's okay. Just, let's go to the far future. What do you want to see, Aaron, from the far future of Call of Duty? I know what's going to be in it, if, if, if this is true, because this is rumor, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Oh, yeah. this is all, everything, okay. everything we report is 100% okay. true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's going to be laser beams. Yeah. It's, they're going to have the moon, be laser. Yeah. beam gun from GoldenEye. Uh, so they're, they're going to borrow that. There will be no more bullets. No. Because Red bullets lasers will be, and blue lasers? Yeah, exactly. For G.I. Joe? Exactly. <laughs> That's all there's going to be. And then hovercrafts everywhere. Everybody's going to be on uh, wheelies. That's right. <laughs> Little shoe wheelies that we're going to be on. <laughs> they're, they're making a comeback? <laughs> yeah, they're going to make a comeback in the, in the far future. It's cylindrical. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's life's a circle. tribes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I don't know. I don't want it to go into the far future. Let it go into the far past or something. Let's throw rocks and... What if, it's so <laughs> what if it's so far into the future they have time travel and you go back to the far past... Okay, rocks. that that would actually make sense so for a Call of Duty splitters. story. Exactly. <laughs> time so travel, time but splitters. To bring your laser guns. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You step out. Someone throws a rock at you. Zap them with your laser. There you go. Laser beams. I don't think Call of Duty can do anything more. The, the game is already. It's as far. Moved. As yeah, it's, it's moved go. far beyond regular. I. You know, I guns. have. I have the vision that you know you'll have a nice beautiful HUD but you won't be able to see like the real things but the thing will you know because the computers are so advanced then it'll just auto aim for you and there yeah. you go, all yeah. the shots all the time you just put the controller down and just let it auto play can we yep. can we give it a rest for a year or two <laughs> no uh, Activision. and then there's, come back there's no Never. way Activision we, will you got allow to. it they need to can we miss it first before I, I love how the same thing happened with Ubisoft and I'm Assassin's glad. Creed they're so like they they're did. like we're not going to make any of this you know for and then they put out three in that period <laughs> New, let, well, let gamers this miss year it for a little while. Bills, man. There's one coming out this year. No, Assassin's Creed? Yeah, I believe we checked, and there's like a mobile Assassin's Creed coming out a before mobile? the end of the year. It's okay, still I, an Assassin's it's Creed. It's still Assassin's Creed. It counts. Not a, it counts. It's not yeah. a console release. They're taking a break from the console release for a year. That's what I... I don't play their... Just don't, kill that series. No, I love how chat is starting games. to weigh in. Uh, we got a new guy. His name is Odyssey. He says, who's the douche wearing the sunglasses? Uh, your father. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. And then he... Well, before you... Dog on him, and he comes back and says his sexy voice makes up for it, and also the fresh hairline. <laughs> you got a fan, so it's a brother. So what was that? What did you call it when they when you 
when you compliment somebody and you uh, speak somebody. this. It's a negging. 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 Is that what he's doing? Oh. He's negging <laughs> he's me? Negging, he's negging yeah. you. Okay. Okay. That sounds hot. That's disgusting, but whatever. <laughs> or she. It could be a she. We don't know. Honestly, let's let's face it. 90% of the internet is male. It is. Exactly. It's a sad truth. So this dude right here, Odyssey, how you doing, brother? <laughs> Uh, there's an interesting topic. Uh, I got to talk to Joe uh, from Antline. He was helping us out uh, when we do our show in uh, West Sac on August, April 9th, the Sacramento Indie Arcade. Indie Jam, okay. The Indie Jam Arcade. Uh, these guys have helped us and given us probably one of our sweetest giveaways to date. It is a streaming package. So it's a professional grade headphones with one of their mod mics. And it can take you from zero to Twitch hero in point zero seconds. Uh, Does it come with boobs? It has them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm just saying yeah, that'll take you from zero to at least 12 views right there. It's true. <laughs> uh, and in the conversation, we talked, and we, he was talking about a debate that they were having around their offices and I was like this is a very good conversation in fact it's so good I want to feature it on the show and we want to have them on to discuss it uh, so without any further ado James please uh, or Joe I think wh whoever can set it up better you guys could talk amongst each other rock paper scissors rock right. paper scissors yeah. and s give us the setup for this topic go ahead Joe all right so here's the setup right we're talking about MOBA players professional MOBA players and professional gamers in general and that some of them, not all of them, but some of them are in fact kids. They're 15 year old or sometimes even younger kids. And the item we have to talk about here is, hey, if we're gonna consider esports a real sport, and which is what I believe, I believe that esports should be considered a sport, uh, we have to regulate that. You can't have kids playing professional basketball, baseball, football, anything. And no sport in the world allows you to have minors just sit down and play. Aaron, the, so, the floor recognizes Mr. Carter. I'm just I'm raising my hand right now if you didn't recognize that. <laughs> uh, so in these other sports, they're physical. Uh, let's see. So the maturity of a, I don't know, 12-year-old compared to a 26-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> I well, would, LeBron James. Are you would, suggesting would, LeBron James is somehow uh, physically stronger than a 12-year-old? Yes. But <laughs> More, more able to regulate hi himself. He, he's uh, yeah. When he when he rips on a twelve year old on the basketball court, <laughs> yes. If back in the day we let you know fifteen year old running back from a high school that's just smashing on everybody in the league go to the NFL and Emmitt Smith drills through him, <laughs> then that's a problem. But I guarantee you, I don't know, maybe eight times out of ten, if you're playing League of Legends online or Smite online or whatever have you. The other guy that's ganking you on the other end, excuse me, the other guy that's, you know, killing you on the other end is probably a little kid. Probably. Nine Skill times level. Out of ten. Yeah, nine times out of ten. I, I, I do agree that we are definitely talking about a non physical sport. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, we, the, the physical limitations that are imposed by a, a sport like football obviously are not going to apply. I don't know about baseball. I mean, really? I mean, come on. <laughs> they don't do anything. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, ball. when they're... They can, you, they can do anything, you know. You say you a batting a cage at 100-mile-an-hour ball, and then we'll yeah, see you come out and have a different... Baseball, I, I'd have to disagree with you there, sir. Baseball is not a sport. If you can play at the highest profession twice in one day, you're done. 90% of the game is standing around in grass. I can do that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, baseball aside... Okay. Uh, I, will, I will say that there is a difference, and, and there's a difference in every sport, but the problem isn't physical it's emotional and mental uh, as well as money related right okay it's it's closer almost to child actors and child stars mm. where there are protections in there to prevent a child actor from a working too much <clears throat> basically and violating labor laws okay and b hopefully these days um have somebody help manage their money so that their parents don't steal it or they don't spend it all on hookers and blow like every 12 year old does of course <laughs> uh, spend your money on when you were 12 just the blow uh, <laughs> the, I, I see where you're coming from did you ever see from. Wolf on Wall Street yeah that oh, was yeah. Aaron in elementary school oh, I believe it I, I see I see I 100% I see his point of view and everything like that but I mean you gave the best examples of child stars 
already. They have things to go out there and protect them. So let's just implement those same things with yeah. the, the esports players that are underage. And with child stars, too, they are required to do school. And yeah. It's not like, you know, yeah. they get the break on TV. There is school and things they need to hit, you know, or, they, you know, their parents are neglectful or whatever. Um, it'll, I think it'll teach them some type of responsibility. Hey, you didn't, you know, meet your grades or whatever like that. You can't play in, in the, the semifinal or something like that. You know, you have a, a responsibility. <laughs> Before you you can you know take this. This is your you know job. You know. Uh, so, so are we saying like we just can't have kid let kids have jobs at a, a young age? Is well, I think it's a matter of of. I mean, in the U.S. at least, right? We have to limit basically how much kids play games. Yeah, that's true. I, yeah. I, I see that. Do we? Yeah, you I, don't want that. In, in this yeah, scenario, no, you should. should be. Bro, you yeah. should. Yeah. This is America. Yeah. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. It's, I hate exactly. when he starts out with that. It's not. It's never, it never good. Leads to it's anything. never <laughs> good. No. It's. It, it's. It. It could, it's possible. It's just there will probably be more regulations and rules for the younger, you know, player or whatever. Uh, but if little Timmy can go toe to toe, you know, with you know old Joe, then I say. Let them, you know. It's well, here's, here's, step your game up, here's Joe. The other edge, the other edge of the sword, though. Once we implement these things, and you force children, and that's what they are. I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that in a, in a derisive way. Uh, you know, anybody who's under 18, uh, if you force them to practice less, they're not going to be able to keep up. If you force them to, if you restrict how much they can practice, is what he's saying. Right. If you, you restrict yeah, you're that, de facto denying them access. I mean, well, no, yeah, not de facto. Well, yeah, I was... de facto. That's the word. Yeah, how, de facto. How, how much? Think about. <laughs> I, I bet you, if you polled kids right now, under a certain age, if you say from I don't know, from twelve to to seventeen or something like that, <laughs> and you calculate how much time they actually spend on the games that are these giant esports games, League of Legends. Oh. My little brother alone, who's fifteen, spends more time on video games than he does homework. I know that for a fact. I he's probably what four, six hours a day. Oh, yeah. He spends more he probably spends more time than people do on their actual job exactly. you know, as an adult. But. So if now if he's doing that and he's getting paid for it, and he mind you, he's still doing stuff in school where he's, you know, passing, burly, but he's burly. passing, <laughs> you know, then that's just that's up to the, the parents, you know, mm -hmm. if they see this is not uh, extremely stressful on their child or whatever like that. Uh, the, the child himself, you know, to see if he's like, I can handle this or I can't handle this. Uh, and then the league to see if that's really uh, something that they want to put themselves in and stuff like that. But I think I think that's a good entry point for James and his views right there when you talk about the league and what their role is. Well, and I think that's that's their major issue right now is that no one's taking a responsibility role. Is I mean, you've got you've got companies like Riot that are coming in and taking responsibility roles and and putting you know restrictions on players and uh, you know they already have an age restriction of you know seventeen to play in the upper echelons. Mm -hmm. um, granted, this year they've made some moves to to help younger players develop into pros um, and not just cut them out. But at the same time, like if we don't have somebody step in or a league form that's going to start giving these kind of rules and start doing it, we could talk about it. But it's, eventually, these companies are just going to step in because it's going to be in their best interest. It, it definitely would be. Yeah, it's a hundred percent in their best interest. I've, we've done tournaments at uh, when I worked at GameStop, mm -hmm. and the winners weren't some thirty-five-year-old guy. It's always a little. It was a little kid that came kids. out, yeah, and he he'd whoop up on them. So uh, the skill is there. Yeah. And I understand you want to. Everybody wants to call uh, esports. You know, this is a sport. This is a sport. It is to a degree. It's almost. I almost equate it to like chess type tournaments type thing, where any age can kind of compete if they put in the time, the practice, and learning. That you know, anybody of any age. That's why you see those you know young prodigies that win these tournaments. They're chess and things like that. I almost equate it to that kind of similar level. And if the if the adults are the take older, the draw. If the, oh, yeah, exactly. If the older <laughs> people, if they get, uh, you know, hurt, like, oh, I just got beat by this young kid. Well, yeah, you did. Yeah. You did. Mm -hmm. Let's face it. Well, I'm not trying to protect the adults. That's not oh, – yeah. I don't care about their feelings. Yeah, okay. not, <laughs> as, no, as no grown adult should. I mean, league players never care about feelings. I mean, so – Then what is your concern then? Yeah, who, who are you? Who are these rules protecting? What about the children? <laughs> I, I think Yeah, it's all about the children. Yeah, exactly. It's all about – It's it's got to be about protecting both – their 
right to an education and a life outside their game. I mean, here's the problem, and you have this in, in lots of things, even chess, where the parents become so engrossed in mm. their child's, uh, we'll call them prodigy, that they give up on the, the rest of their child. You know, they can't, the parents can't be trusted to regulate. I know. That's no, a what are you talking make. about? Your parents can't be trusted to regulate. Yeah, that's, now we're stretching. Uh, now, now you're, no, no, no. no. I see the point. I see the point he's trying to make. He's saying that sometimes, you know, it's kind of like a, for any of you that grew up with parents that have sport or sports in their blood. I grew up where my dad was huge into sports, so I was. He was coaching me anytime I could, and that was pretty much the only thing that mattered growing up was sports. So. That's what he's he's getting at that point where parents will often get lost in pushing their child so much in one avenue that they let everything else fall to the wayside. There are certain standards of education that children have to hit. Right? Oh, I agree. If you can still hit those standards, what you do the other nine, ten hours of the day or you do with your parents, without mm -hmm. your parents, whatever, is totally... As long as it's legal. There you go. <laughs> you know, like, your mm -hmm. deal. Well, what he's saying is he's, yeah. he's saying that parents will lose sight of those other key who factors. Is, uh, who and is there, anybody to make... Oh, I'm sorry. There's two sides. There's two sides to that, too. There's, there's the parents that will push too hard. And, you know, there should be a way for the child to have a recourse to say, hey, I don't want to be pushed that hard. Right now, you, they don't have that right. They don't have the right to say, hey, I don't want to practice league anymore. Wait, why, why? Why? These why? are whole well, other brought, issues. Hold though. on. Yeah. Why? They, don't even want to really I, mention this guy, but the singer Aaron Carter sued his own mother. Like, yeah, his not everybody mama. has the same backbone or yeah, not uh, you know, but, that. But same. I mean, but, well, James, I, I just want to give them the avenue for it. Well, they have but coaches, second, right? Let's see what James. I'm really interested in what James okay, got on this. Go ahead. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, you're talking about parental responsibility. I mean, it's their responsibility to get representation. You know what I mean? If if you want to go the child action actor right, you know what I mean? Like. You can't. We can't sit here and hold everybody, every parent's hand. They're parents, you right. know. We can't expect them not to overreact and and take something, you know, for their child and 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 be like, oh, I'm gonna vicariously live through them. That's gonna happen in every single sport, every single level of every single hobby. Yeah. I mean, we can't start making regulations based on that fear, you know. So I mean, I can't. I can't say that like sweeping big old sweeping regulations are the way to go. Like. Um, sure, we need to protect these younger players. These younger players' parents should be getting them representation to protect them, and these players should be having a conversation on how to represent themselves. You know, and and no one else can do it but the players and the people that they choose to represent them. You know, or a league needs to step in and just do it. You know, I mean, there's those are really options in my eyes. Yeah, so, it, it seems like them trying to push parenting practices is not. Uh, the it's, way to go. You, it, you can't regulate that. You, you still, just can't. can't. It's still just the, like I said before. The three things that need to be monitored is the 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 child, the parent, and then the league should all have some type of uh, input in that. And if they all deem that it isn't, you know, you got to get a hundred percent vote on it. If it isn't right for that person or that kid, then he's out. You know, no matter how good he are his potential, he could be the next Bobby Fischer of league or whatever. But take the draw. Yeah, exactly. But if he if it's not going to fit, then he's out. You know, I don't think it was just Kobe Bryant. You know, coming out of high school saying, you know, uh, you know, I can do this. I don't care what the league says. What did my parents say? I think it was a a group thing. You know, and then a I'm no expert cash. on Bobby Fischer, but didn't Bobby Fischer kind of fall apart after his childhood? I don't, I don't know. even know that he was a prodigy as a child. I think that movie kind of got things mixed up. For, well, for well, he got a movie out of him, so I mean, <laughs> I guess there's something. I think he yeah. was pretty uh, an out there guy. Yeah, where, where I was going, where I was going was there's also the other side of the parenting, which is which is that the parents that just don't give a crap, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll just let their kids fail out of school and play league all day long. And well, you see, know, that's why you have other when one of the three but, pillars fall. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not yeah, I'm not looking for enforcement. All I want is avenues for players to take and sort of a structure for them to take uh, to take with them when they when they go down those avenues. Okay. Something like kind of like requirements. So, you know, like you have to your GPA has to be X, you know, points or whatever. You have to maintain a 2.5 or 3.0 Just like GPA. a student athlete. Like a student athlete, right. something like that. Mm -hmm. Having those those minimum requirements, you know, they have to you could even, you know, impose, I don't know, you know, some type of volunteer work or something like that, some type of, you know, extracurricular type thing to kind of balance it out. And it's nothing crazy. Like, you don't yeah. have to be, you know, 
you know. I know, you know, we're only talking about people who are like going to like invitational tournaments, right? Like exactly. we're talking about the top level players, right? Yeah, this is yeah. not like every student who's in school and wants to play League of Legends eight hours a day. When it's, you know, <laughs> I think you can look at semi-professional hockey. They do it very, mm. very well. I mean, they have a very, very young That's league, anywhere you know, from ages sixteen to twenty. You know, and they they have staffed uh, tutors and teachers that travel with the team that are provided by the team. And the kids are, I mean, they have to maintain GPAs. I mean, they're, all these things are in play in hockey. So, I mean, there's there's certain models that we can look at and, and borrow from. And let's not forget, they already have scholarships for league. league. Right. So, I mean, somebody's already out there practicing to get that scholarship to go and to be a professional league player. We right. had somebody in chat say, uh, what about like an underage esports? Something similar to high school or college. Uh, they don't get paid, but they have a chance to get scouted by pro teams. They do that already. They have That's that in right. certain things, yeah. Yeah. But that, right. would, that would help with the regulation of that. It's yeah. regulated in the sense that yeah. they have their own I think, division. I think James, James touched on that kind of earlier, that we need the, these structures in place for younger players to, to move into professional leagues and sort of, I wouldn't say get them out of professional leagues, but, you know, if they're going to be in professional leagues, they need to adhere to, to other rules that other players may not want to or have the capacity to adhere to. Yeah. Hmm. So there we have it. We've discussed it. Kids can play. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. A fascinating topic. I'm glad, I'm glad you guys brought that to us. Um, I want to know what you guys think, the podcast listeners. So if you guys have an opinion on this, put it in the comment section wherever you're listening to this, uh, whether it's iTunes, you can hit us up on Twitter at Video Game Bang, Facebook.com slash Video Game Bang Bang. And do we have any other social medias, Aaron? Uh, Don't really, I wouldn't really care to hear you guys' comments on Instagram. Uh, the YouTube. The YouTube. They can put it there because then we post uh, oh, extra. Oh, yeah, we do. We yeah, do. The Video Game Bang. The Video Game Bang. Um, I thought that was riveting. Riveting, huh? I think we had a couple news stories we can uh, cut Game to. Game philosophers. <laughs> Um, Capcom hates Ken apparently with the new Street Fighter V costume <laughs> that was so revealed. Uh, Jada, did you write this one? Oh, I no, John this. did. Okay, John, John did. John johned me. Oh, he johned you. He johned me. <laughs> I was gonna like Chris texted me. He's like, he's like, hey, can you write something on the costumes? I saw the message like 20 minutes later, and I was like, I was like, yeah, I'll get to it tomorrow. He's like, never mind. John already did it. <laughs> I'm like. Oh, okay, whatever. What's you wrong with the Ken talk. costume? I mean, it's not my favorite, but it's why? It's just terrible. Is it? It's so What's so bad, bad about it's it? It's boring. I'm trying to it's see just what he's not a, It's it is not okay. Like, does he have a new haircut? Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. It's like um, fans are already like mixed on Ken's new look to begin with, and then they threw this costume and made him look worse. Under Armour Ken. Like, <laughs> that's what I keep thinking. They get like, a sponsor. It looks, it looks like he's wearing a uh, a short sleeve rain jacket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so practical. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I do my street fighting. That's gonna be website. the next lyric in Alanis Morissette yeah. song. Short sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> it's like short sleeves on that's a rainy his, day. On a raincoat. Is he wearing the um? <laughs> like, just, like it's just bad. What's that uh, zombie game? Dead that Rising. Ger- Dead Rising coat. It is does kind of look. Does kind of look Rising like too? a. Uh, I don't remember his name. Yeah, I don't remember his name either. Yeah. I want to say it was Alex. Whatever his name was. Just go back to his old costumes that he wore in yeah. four. Oh, that'll work. Uh, well, we got these last couple minutes. Tell everyone where they can learn more about Antlion Audio and pick up themselves one of the sweet mod mics that I see you are so, using. I see it's on your head right now. You've sounded great. Probably better than any of our other Skype guests ever. Uh, why is Whoa! that? Winning! Well, you can pick up your own mod mic at www.modmic.com and sound just like me. Sort of. <laughs> Let's not make any promises. <laughs> sound exactly your own voice. Like you. There's a disclaimer. Uh, and, and then you guys also sell headphones. So you can one stop shop, buy yourself a nice pair of studio headphones, uh, and then you add the mod mic to it. Like me, I love these Sony headphones. Like these are my studio jam. And I thought to myself, I wish these sons of bitches had a microphone on them. And then lo and behold, for fifty dollars extra, you buy the mod mic. It's only fifty bucks. That's the part that surprises me, and it sounds so good. Um, the only the only other thing I have to say is it also works with your PlayStation and Xbox. So woo, hook it up for all I you like oh, console yeah. noobs, all you filthy casuals. Uh, Jada, you do streaming, and it's quite good, I may say. Yeah. Uh, where can they check out your stream? Uh, Twitch.tv. Uh, Jade Arena. 
Twitch, what is it? Twitch, I don't even know. I haven't streamed Twitch. Twitch.tv Twitch slash, slash Gatorina. J A D A R I N A. You like the 24 hour streaming deal. Uh, yeah, I do 24 hour streams every month. I'm going to miss March. Uh, actually, I might actually get March in because I'm uh, canceling. Is there a correlation stuff. between your 24 hour streaming and them stealing from your car? No, no, <laughs> not at all. I'm just saying. No, my 24 hour. got to know where you're at. My car break ins happen when, I'm good, when I've been going down to a showdown and competing. Okay. They've, it's, my car's been broken in when I'm going competing, oh, so. Okay. I'm, I'm, which means I'm going to be taking a break from competing in Street Fighter for a while. At least I get a new car. So robbers get something else to do then. I'm just yeah. saying. Maybe just, yes. maybe just park somewhere else. I parked the second time I put this. The second time I parked four blocks away. Maybe just Uber everywhere. That's yep. literally what it's. If I'm going to want to go down, I'm going to like park out of out of uh, San Francisco out of and Bart in. <laughs> park out of state. Yes, yeah, out of state. Hitchhike in. <laughs> park in Nevada. Yeah. Your Uber drivers so. are going to start getting mugged. <laughs> 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 oh man and of course guys check us out april 9th at the sacramento indie arcade where we will be there with macy rose one of the hottest cosplayers in sacramento uh for aaron carter the real david webb jada james and joe from antlion audio my name is Corey, and you have all just collectively been banged take the draw <laughs>